Hello everybody and welcome back to Real Talk Football. My name is Tom. Welcome aboard to you all live for this uh, video of my uh, game week one predictions in the Premier League 23-24 season. Um, starting off the season tomorrow, um, which will be Friday the, Friday the 11th of August. Burnley Man City is the first game to kick off. I can't believe how far that the... Uh, I mean, I can't believe how quick the, the uh, break's gone this time. Last season, it felt like ages. This season, it's almost gone too quickly. As you can tell, I'm wearing uh, the green shirt, the one that hasn't been released yet. Um, this shirt was my first one to arrive from China. Um, so, yeah, I'm waiting on the other ones. Obviously, if my home kit doesn't arrive, which I'll be fuming about. Um, if that does not arrive soon, I will wear this one. For the Arsenal Lion Forest game, but yeah, beautiful kit this is. Mm. Uh, yeah, just before we continue, then with of course my Premier League game week one predictions, um, please do uh, go ahead and join our fancy Premier League uh, 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 um, league. Um, it, the code is S two R eight A C. Uh, that's S two R eight A C. One more time, S R two R eight A C. Uh, to join our uh, FPL league uh, for the twenty three twenty four season, it is a head to head league, and there are three knockout stages in that. So be sure to join it and yeah, join in the fun. See if you can win. Uh, Okie dokie, so moving on then to our Premier League game in part one predictions, and we're going to start off with Burnley, who are taking on Manchester City. Now, Burnley, I felt like they had a very, very strong season in the Championship last season, you know, really dominated, you know, were, you know, were miles clear of Sheffield United in the end, top of the league, you know, won it quite comfortably say quite com comfortably just comfortably would be the word they were brilliant last season Burnley and I feel as though they've got something different to offer now under Vincent Com company um with the manager change Sean Dyche leaving you know it, it just towards the end of uh, the 21-22 season it just things got a little bit awkward for for Burnley and a bit scrappy, you know, and a bit like, oh, what do we do? What do we do? It was sad to see them get relegated, but now it looks as though they've come back stronger. Now, obviously, they didn't make too good of a showing of themselves in their 6 0 defeat to Manchester City at, in the FA Cup last season. Uh, but they were at home this time. They, they, they open at Turf Moor. Uh, this will be their only game for. Um, about two weeks because obviously in the second game week Burnley his game against Luton is postponed due to uh, Luton st stadium redevelopments uh, causing the game to not be able to take place there there was a uh, re request for uh, uh, by Luton for the game to be played at Surf Moor Burnley denied that request and to be fair some people might say well it's stupid you know I don't know postpone games but it's Burnley's choice, and I can understand why they want the variety, you know. Two straight home games in a row, does that, would you really want that? No. At the start of the season, I want variety. So, fair play to Burnley, stood the ground. Because they could have easily just uh, pandered loot and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, Man City, we're all right in the Community Shield. Better than us, I feel. But uh, comfortably beaten on penalties, I must say. Um, bit leaky, little bit um, rusty. Need some oil. Um, uh, yeah, a bit rusty. Um, I'm going to go with one all draw to open Man City season. We know that they don't open the season well, so I'm going to go Burnley one, Man City one. Probably being nice to Burnley there, you know. Probably been a bit harsh against Man City, but I just feel as though Man City are a bit rusty. You know, they've lost a few key players, so 1-1. One, one. Moving on then to Arsenal, who take on Man uh, uh, Nottingham Forest uh, at home. 
in the uh, Premier, Premier League game week one uh, at the Emirates. That was the biggest shock. We were at home. I was like, what? We're not Friday night away again. You know, that was what we were for the last two seasons. I'm quite happy with a home game against Forest. You know, at first I was a bit like, I was a bit peed off, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with uh, starting at home. And I feel so it should be a nice, comfortable 5 0 win for us. You know, Forest, a Forest, don't have a good away record. Um, I think they only won one, once in the uh, Premier League away last season. I think that um, Forest will put, start the game well, you know, as they tend to do in games. However, I just feel as though, same as last season, second half, fire, fire, fire. You know, I reckon 5 0 should be a minimum scoreline, really, at home to Forest. No offence to Forest, but given our record against them at home, we should be beating them 5 0. So, yeah, Jesus is out. I'm not too sure about Havertz up front, but we know that Martinelli can do it all himself if he needs to, you know. So, 5 0. Arsenal 5, Nottingham Forest 0. So, open the season. Let's move on then to Bournemouth, who take on West Ham United. Folks, uh, now Bournemouth strong, started the season strongly, had, had, had well, but the majority of the season last season they were strong. Uh, after the World Cup, they were a little bit uh, wobbly, you know, had a few wobbly results in the Carabao Cup, etc., etc. Um, I feel as though. Bournemouth or a team who on the eye seem weak, but they do have some players who will step up to the plate when they are needed. I don't think Bournemouth will let up in the opening stages of the season. I think they'll open it well. You know, I think that West Ham, you know, with the loss of Rice, may be a little bit shook and a bit like, oh, a bit like, oh, lost, you know. I feel as though he might be lost because he was always starting for West Ham. Maybe West Ham, that might affect West Ham. Bournemouth haven't really lost many key players. They've more or less bought players this transfer window. Nevertheless, though, I, I, I see Bournemouth winning this game. I, I want to say 3-4-1, three, three but I've just gone with a neat 2-1 uh, victory for Bournemouth. I reckon... That they will go 2 0 up and West Ham will get a consolation goal through maybe Bowen or Antonio, someone like that, Pakitar, whoever. Um, but no, positive result on opening day for Bournemouth. Bournemouth 2, West Ham 1. So we move on to Brighton, who take on Luton then, folks. Uh, Luton, first time in the Premier League ever. And it is going to be uh, an away match to open uh, Luton's. Well, Premier League history, we should say. Not just Premier League season, open Luton's Premier League history. Be the first ever match that Luton play in the Premier League. Um, I think that Luton are a great side. I think that they are able to achieve. However, when you're brand new to the Premier League and you're going away to, to, to a team as experienced and as confident as Brighton, you know, who piped some teams at home last season, let's say. Um, I think that if you're Luton Town, it's a case of, well, just not really experiencing it before. I think that uh, the, Bright the, the Luton's first game against Brighton will be a game to learn from. I reckon they will suffer a, a defeat. I reckon they'll learn from it, though. And there's nothing wrong with you losing your first game ever in the Premier League. I do think that Brighton will uh, start... I do think Brighton will start the season with a really big win. Now, when I say really big win, I don't mean as in big win against a big team. I just mean, you know, a nice high high scoring game. I'm not going to write Luton off too much, but I am going to say 4-1 for Luton's opening game. Nothing against Luton. Just, you know, it's Luton's first time in the Premier League. I don't think they know what it's like just yet. 
but they will learn quickly, I'm sure. But but uh, first game for Luton, it's a four-one defeat to Brighton. Moving on then to Everton versus Fulham. I had to think about this carefully now. Everton, we know what Everton are like. Sometimes they can be wow, they can blow you away. Big results, big wins, all that jazz. And other times they can just get defeated heavily all the time. And I couldn't decide which one of those two factors of Everton would happen on opening day this season. Now, Fulham, we know that um, they didn't end the season too well last season, had a very good positive season, finished high. Maybe there'll be a bit of second season syndrome, season syndrome in them this season. And, and perhaps maybe... Um, uh, the loss of Mitrovic, if of course rumours are true that he will never play a game for Fulham again, you know, because Mitrovic is quite a big player. I think that Fulham will be fine, but I've gone safe because I don't know what evil. I just I couldn't figure out, you know, I can't figure out what either one of these two will be able to produce on opening day because they are two unpredictable sides. And in a head-to-head, you've got to put it as a draw. So I'm saying 1-1 between Everton and Fulham. Could go completely the opposite way, but for me, I see a one-all draw. Now, Sheffield you know, United up against Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace, of course, are keeping Roy Hodgson next season. Um, Sheffield United, I feel as though it will be sweet. Butter and flowers all around Bramall Lane um, on opening day for them. I just feel as though they're a team who knows this league quite well, who have been, who were obviously upset by the relegation, you know, were fighting to come back, did come back, you know. And for Sheffield United now, I think it's a case of being too ready. Same with Burnley, really. And I just feel as though they'll go out high confidence. You know, they've got they've got some good players in the squad. High confidence. I think Crystal Palace will start well. I think they'll play well. I think they'll be in the game. But I feel as though Sheffield United will have more quality purely on the fact that it's confidence and possibly a bit of excitement as well. You know, well, we, yeah. Sometimes you see that with newly promoted teams where they just flourish in the opening game because of the confidence, the excitement, all that jazz. Yeah, I'm saying a 2-0 win for, for, Crystal, for Sheffield United at Bramall Lane to open the season for them. Sheffield United 2, Palace 0. Positive result again for Sheffield United on opening day. I predicted the same two years ago and I got it right. Now Newcastle against Villa, we all know what I'm going to say. I don't think it will take you very long to figure out exactly what I'm going to predict here because you guys know already that all I want and all I think will happen is Villa will get relegated. I do think they'll finish rock bottom and I do think Newcastle will pipe them. Newcastle are a quality side, obviously they're an oil club, they've had the money, you know, but nevertheless, Newcastle have got quality and that's the Villa haven't. As much as people can go, well, Villa are quality. They've got Watkins and all that jazz and all these signings, you know. I keep looking at Villa and I think, you know, whenever I see they've made a signing, I, the, the posh names, the, they, they sound like big names of big players, but they're not. All these fancy names that they sign aren't actually fancy players. Fancy names, but not fancy players. Villa or Villa, I can tell you right now, they ain't getting no Europe. And uh, yeah, they're in the Europa Conference League. Yeah, that's going to surely make Villa corrupt because, let's face it, Villa ain't got squad depth to um, compete in Europe. I don't think they'll get relegated. And I'm going to start off with a nice, comfortable, just walk in the park for Newcastle. In a 4-0 win, Isak on the score sheet, Wilson, all the lot, Almiron, whoever you can think of will be on the score sheet for Newcastle. Probably more than four. Newcastle United, four, Villa nil. Brentford v Tottenham Hotspur then. Now, uh, some people will come here a bit like 
harsh against Tottenham. We know that Spurs tend to start the seasons well and end horrifically. I think in this case, it'll be a bit different. I feel as though Brentford will not change. I think that, you know, Brentford are Brentford. You know, I don't think Brentford are going to fall into a case where it's severely bad and at risk of relegation. I don't think they'll be in a situation like that. You know, I feel as though Brentford, whenever they can, and whenever they have the capacity to, they'll win. Unlike some teams who, for example, Norwich, you know, they'll get the rare win, but no, they're just, you know, other than that rare win, you know, they're just slipping down to relegation with all the defeats. They just can't help it. Brentford ain't like that. We know that. Brentford have got so much quality. You think about it, all those players have come from the Championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. cool. Point is, Brentford are quality. And at the moment, Spurs are not. Spurs are in quite a bad place and they are going for a rebuild, which is going to take time. I don't think Brentford, I don't think Brentford will let up again on opening day, particularly against Spurs, who at the moment are in a bad place. So I'm going to say Brentford three, Spurs one. I reckon there will be a goal in it for either Kane, Son, or Kane or Son. But uh, a nice game for Brentford overall. Goals, possibly for, I'd say from Vissa and then Bumo. Obviously, Tony's out uh, on uh, suspension due to uh, his gambling issues. But no. Yeah. But yet another happy flowers match. Happy flowers result. Yeah, Brentford, I think they'll be emphatic, as they always are, 3-1. Now, this one is the difficult one, Chelsea v Liverpool. Now, a lot of Liverpool fans will be a little bit mad, about, mad at me for this one, you know, because obviously Liverpool fans want to win, just like all the other fans in the world do of every single club. They want to win everything Liverpool do, you know. They're upset when they don't win, you know, and all that jazz. They, they are a high-standards club. But they didn't play to high standards last season. Liverpool were awful last season. I'm sorry, Liverpool fans. I, I know you're going to kill me for it, but you were terrible last season. Fifth is unacceptable. The way you played was unacceptable. Some of the defeats were unacceptable. You guys were awful last season. Absolutely woeful. It's harsh. But it's true. Now, Chelsea were woeful as well. The problem is... Chelsea haven't really had a transfer budget. They've just been like, sell, 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 sell. And then you spend, and then Todd Burley's gone, you spend whatever you want on whoever you want. And that's exactly what Chelsea have done. They've bought in Kunku and a few other names who I can't remember. Posh names. Now, particular simulation with situation with Villa. Because as we know, last season, Chelsea bought posh names and good players, quality players, both windows. And were absolutely shambolic. Could not find the back of the net. I don't think. I don't think they even touched scored a hundred goals last season. Sorry, I don't think they even scored what sixty goals. I don't think they surpassed sixty goals last season, Chelsea. And that's terrible. But I think that in this case, you know. Chelsea look ready. They've got a high quality manager. Jurgen Klopp is on his on his knees at the moment. Um, he is. He's on the brink of a sack in Jurgen Klopp. Chelsea's just got a new manager, a quality manager as well, Mauricio Pochettino. I don't rate him, you know, as a manager who's top, top quality. I wouldn't take him at Arsenal, but he is one of the top managers. And let's face it. Poch ain't going to let Chelsea do what they did last season. You know, it was a mess. Two should have been sacked. It was a disgraceful sacking by Todd Burley. I'm sorry, that was just a horrible sacking. You know, Todd Burley was... Oh. Um, but move aside from that, when you point Graham Potter, what do you expect? What do you expect when you're pointing Graham Potter? You expect now Potter. Look, I rated him at Brighton. 
I don't think he was ready for the Chelsea job, though. He was overrated by Chelsea. You know, he was... He was... Chelsea took him as if he was a top-class manager. But he... He was top class at Brighton, but he wasn't the top class that could handle Chelsea. And that was kind of the situation. Now, I thought it was a reasonable um, decision to bring back Frank Lampard for that season after sacking Potter. You know, he knows some of the, you know, he knew some of the players. You know, and I guess you could say. Frank's trusted there a bit. You know, he wasn't great for Chelsea. You know, I thought that Frank... I think that Frank isn't... is, a, is an awful manager, personally, but... You know, we he had some good good moments at Chelsea. And he spent some time there. So I think that, you know, it was good... A good, good management of the situation in the end to bring back somebody who the players knew to try and help them f have a positive end to the season. Now they did have a positive end to the season and they didn't get many wins under, uh, under, under big Frank, but Frank tried. Anyways, I'm talking nonsense now. Look, point aside, I think that Mauricio Pochettino is going to get a win. I think he's going to demand a win, you know. I think he's going to... I think those Chelsea players know that Pochettino will rip into them if they don't if they don't show up, you know, at, on home soil against Liverpool. So I'm going to go Chelsea 1, Liverpool 0. I think just Chelsea will have that bit more in the end. Finally, moving on to Manchester United, who I think will win the league this season against Wolverhampton Wanderers and um, yeah, I'm going to go, well, look Wolves aren't great away from home, Wolves aren't great in a lot a lot of things they aren't great at attacking similar to Chelsea last season aren't great at scoring goals do I feel as though they're going to be able to find enough goals to keep up with Manchester United at Old Trafford Unfortunately not. I'm sorry to say it, Wolf Sands, but I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that you can never really go there and say Wolves will do this away from home. I mean, yes, Wolves, in, on the rarest of occasions, have got the most dramatic results ever away from home, but I don't think that's going to happen against uh, United Old Trafford for them, unfortunately. Now, they have done it before. Don't get me wrong, they've done it before. At the moment, though, I just don't think that Wolves have got the capacity to do that. So I'm going to go Manchester United 3, Wolves 0. Bruno, uh, Rashford. Bruno with 2, Rashford with 1. Comfortable in the United in the end. United 3, Wolves 0. Okay, okay, then that's it for my game week one predictions, folks. Uh, the the Premier League opens this week uh, uh, tomorrow at eight pm. Burley Man City Friday night football. We'll be live for it. We'll be live for. Uh, we'll be live for. Well, I've not signed my three o'clock kickoff yet. Um, I need to though. Um, I um, will be live for uh, Burley Man City tomorrow, and then on Saturday night football, I will be live for Arsenal v Nottingham Forest three o'clock kickoff to be confirmed. Uh, then 5.30, Newcastle United taking on Villa at St. James's. Super Sunday will consist of uh, Brentford v Spurs and then followed by Chelsea v Liverpool. And on Monday Night Football, of course, Manchester United versus Wolves. So that's opening weekend, pretty much all covered by me. And yeah, the season starts tomorrow. 8 p.m. We'll be live for it. I'm so excited. Can't lie, I'm so excited. Once again, please do uh, join the FPL uh, league uh, if you can. Uh, S to to our eight AC um, to uh, is the code to join. If uh, if we get some members, I will 
consider giving out prizes for that. Okay, then, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll see you all tomorrow for Friday Night Football Burnley, taking on Manchester City. Bye-bye for now.